Greetings and salutations, dear viewers, and welcome to episode two of Taking Book Titles Too Literally. This is a creative inspiration series where I take books and, regardless of their original content, look at only the title and see what cool ideas I can get by taking it literally. I tend to focus on fantasy and folklore stories, the kind of things that could fill the background of a world. But all of you are welcome, nay invited, to use this for whatever cool ideas you can come up with. Now I want this to be a weekly series, but I do understand that I am dependent on what other people name their books. And some weeks may just be a little thinner than others. This week in particular was actually kind of a rough one. I don't have many good books to bring to the table myself, one or two, but all of you also suggested a lot of neat ideas. So I'm going to be looking at four books today, two of my own and two of yours. Just as a heads up for the future, if I just can't come up with any good ideas for the week, I'm going to take the week off. I'm not going to try to push something out of an obligation. But rest assured, it'll pick back up soon enough. So let's start on up with... The Women in the Castle by Jessica Shatuck. It may not be strange for women to be in a castle, especially in a fantasy setting, so instead let's think about what kind of situation would there need to be for it to be strange. Perhaps an all-male royalty that's existed for hundreds of years. Maybe a couple women are actually invited in to take a part of this royalty. Shocking to many. Or perhaps this all-male royalty is exceptionally aggressive, and a number of women manage to find themselves in the castle completely by accident. Perhaps they're trying to run away or escape from something else. Out of the frying pan into the fire, so to say. Or if we want to go a little more folklore-like, Perhaps it's unusual to see anyone in the castle. Almost a ghost story, if you will, a haunted castle, of people going to visit the castle and seeing phantoms and spirits of women about. Or if we don't want to go all the way to phantoms and spirits, perhaps it's just something you catch out of the corner of your eye every now and then that makes you say, I don't think we're alone in this castle. The Girl with the Lower Back Tattoo by Amy Schumer. Now at face value, this may not seem that drastic. In fact, it would appear that the book takes it literally already. But we can still use it to come up with some neat fantasy ideas. And for that, we're going to look at, I think it was Pixar's old method for writing stories. Of take whatever the first thing is that you think of, discard it. Take the second thing you'd think of, discard it. Take the third thing, discard it. Don't do the obvious. So if we're going to look at a fantasy setting, then we have someone who exists in a fantasy setting with a lower back tattoo. Honestly, this is already still a little on the common side because it's used so often for flair and to give character to the character. So let's take it a step further. Instead of, say, what you immediately think of, maybe a tribal tattoo of some form, let's make the tattoo mean something. Mean something big in a fantasy setting. Maybe it's some arcane words that when spoken by the right person in the right place, it'll cast a spell. Opening the door to some lost city. Perhaps it's something in the girl's control. Maybe a, a tattoo of an actual object, say, a clock that she can resort to in order to control time. You could do anything you want if you take it far enough. The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls, suggested by Firedbones11. So of course we start with a castle actually made of glass. From here it would be interesting looking into how was this castle made? Who made this castle and why? And what can you do with it from there? Perhaps there's stained glass amongst normal glass, or perhaps the entire thing is stained glass. How much privacy 
do the people inside have? And for the nature of privacy, maybe there are some other magics going about. Teleporters, mirrors you can walk in, a mirror is a form of glass. So from the outside, perhaps you can see a glorious treasure right there at the center of the castle. You can see it from clear outside. It's a glass castle, of course. But how do you get to that treasure? You can see the entire layout of the castle, but perhaps that's part of the challenge. And being able to see the entire layout of the castle, you already know what pitfalls to avoid and how. Or perhaps even given that, the pitfalls are especially well hidden, and you have to use every little bit of that observation in order to be able to tell where exactly they are. A challenge of sorts, instead of so much someone trying to protect something, maybe a game that the owner of the castle puts on. The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson, suggested by Daniel Finnegan. I just think this one's neat for the very thought of the sky being everywhere. Is it a world that's perpetually in the sky? Is there no ground? Just sky up, down, everywhere? Do the people fly? Is there ground at all? Or perhaps would there have to be small little pockets of land? Or do they simply live in the clouds? Keep in mind that the more not sky that you add, is the less everywhere it is. Alternatively, what we think of as the sky is simply air. But what if in this fantasy world, that's not quite it? We think of the sky as being air, but it's also a border to outer space. Where exactly is the sky then? Is it simply the air before we get to outer space? And if it is, then what if in this fantasy world, that's not quite as simple? What if the sky is a little bit different? Maybe there's a gas up there that's known to be poisonous, so you can't go too high without falling to that poison. Or perhaps even worse, it's an evil essence. Something that everyone shies away from because they know how bad it is. The work of demons up in the sky. But then what if the discovery is that as it turns out, all that's up there that makes up the sky has been down here where everyone is all along. The thing that we've all been trying so hard to avoid has always been here. That's all I've got this week. If any of these titles give you some cool ideas, I want to hear about them in the comments. If you've seen any cool book titles this week that gave you some neat ideas or just want to share, let me know. Or even if you want them featured on the show. And as always, if any of these books has made you curious about what the actual stories are about, reading's never a bad thing. Until next week, everybody.